syllabus. Uh, there should be, you know, in the lecture I put this, uh, there's like, before you to get started, you need to basically install Python. And I have made videos for Mac, Windows, and Linux. And I know that most majority of the users will be uh, Windows users. So you have two choices. You can either go to the video, click on that and follow the instructions, or you, I also put up uh, instructions as a PDF, which you can click. And I know some people may not know how to download this from GitHub. I can, okay, I put a, a good link. So in GitHub, normally there's a download icon which you need to go, but I think I put a, a better link so you can easily uh, get this. So there are like A, B, C. Step A basically gets you Python running. Step B helps you install Atom, which I'll be using today. And then step C is, uh, you can actually install Mujapo. If you just do one more thing, which is uh, from a command line, you need to say uh, pip install Mujapo. And so if you have any questions about it, let me know. I would say your, your best bet is to try to do this because first thing you want to do is you want to do any programming is to learn how to install software. It's sometimes not as intuitive as just clicking on any exe and, and doing that. You do it for some things, but not for other things. Uh, so once you do that, you'll have Atom, which looks like this. And so we will basically write code. And then once we write the code, we'll run it and we'll see that it will uh, basically print the output over here somewhere. Okay, so what I did was we'll get started with the basics. I'm gonna assume that you know nothing about uh, Python and uh, you will see that I'll also give you quotes. It's not like I just tell you do this and you are left in the dark as to how to go about it. You basically will have code which you can then take and modify to suit your own purpose instead of instead of you know referring to a tutorial. Again, I don't think it's a good way to go and pick up a book on Python and learn Python because uh, the amount of information in that book is so much that and you don't have so much time to learn learn Python in in like week two or three weeks. It takes you like a whole whole semester to do that. So don't do that. Uh, usually the way programming works, if you're new to this is, you have a quick, uh, question, you type it on Google, you get an answer, you try it, what people suggest. And as you do that, you learn how to uh, write code and how to get answers to your questions. And sometimes it is, uh, when you do this initially, it will be a lot of perspiration because you will be getting, you'll be picking up the wrong information, but then as you start doing things, you get faster with uh, programming. So, uh, so some things are, your best started off with just knowing some things instead of trying to get the documentation. So once you have written something, you can save it, go less. I'm just gonna save it on the desktop. Okay, so once you do that, uh, and you'll see when you install the software, there are two ways to do this. You run this program. You can go to packages, script, and say run script. And if everything works right, it'll actually print what you just made. Print. Hello, okay. Uh, the other way to do it is if you go to packages, script, uh, run script, you see that the shortcut for Windows is Control Shift B. So if you press that, it's faster than trying to uh, go every time to script and run, doing run script. So Control Shift B. And then you have the same output. Okay, so what we'll do is I'm just going to go through commands and uh, you don't have to take notes. As I said, I'll share all this code with you. Uh, we'll do simple assignments. So think of Python as a calculator. Uh, it's better than a calculator because you can save variables, uh, save numbers into variables, which you can then use later on. So A, C equals A plus B. I don't know why it's, I'm not used to, I need to fix that, but I'm not used to working on Windows. Print C. And then if you want to run it, Control Shift P. And so you get that. Now it also prints the first one if you want to comment it out. Uh, what you can do is um, the shortcut is Control Backslash. And I think it should be somewhere there. If you search for it, you'll get it. Okay. Um, so the, the, in MATLAB, the, the basic content, data quantity type is uh, matrices. So everything you write, A equals one will be actually a one by one matrix. I think in Python, it's, it's a list. So a list is something which can hold more than uh, one data type. So it doesn't have to be integers, it can be strings. 
And then if you want to test what you wrote, again, control shift P uh, and you have uh, the whole list. You can also, so in MATLAB, you start numbering from one. In C, you start numbering from zero. So Python follows C. So you start numbering from zero. So if you want to print the first item, you say zero. Control shift P and then show it printed one because the zeroth item is one. Okay, now this is a very important command. I use it often to figure out what type of, what, what is the type of, uh, we should put this, I comment out, print list. Type list, so this basically tells you uh, what is the data type list. Sometimes you'll see that it gives you errors and you have no way of figuring. You are like stuck as to why isn't it doing this operation and it's very useful to query the type of the Prisa class. So if you're trying to use list and then you're trying to operate it with int or array, then it will give you a problem because it's not compatible. So it's, this is like a very important command. I think I use it for debugging many things. So then going moving on, uh, we have if else conditions, if else. Okay, so I'll just make up something. C equals 10 if C is greater than zero and C less than five, then we should just say print. Okay, now here's not one thing that the way you write if else is you put the statement and then you put a, a colon. And then when you say enter, it actually put, puts a tab space. And if you use WordPad or Notepad, you would not know how to do this. And so you will actually, when you run that code in, which you wrote in Notepad, you'll get an error. That's why it's very important to have an ID installed and not rely on WordPad or Notepad to write this. Okay. And so here, uh, you can keep writing this. That's how Python understands that this if has multiple lines. But in this case, I don't want to go multiple lines. I want to have an else if. So else if is elif. Now, if I'm not careful, it will, it will treat that as a, a nested within the if loop. So if C greater than five and C less than nine, then C is mean put six, six, zero, six, six and nine. And then if nothing is true, then else print P is greater. Okay, so we said we put set C equals 10, so clearly it should print the last one. So we can check that, control shift, B, and then says C is greater than 10, and says equal to 10. Okay, uh, so if else is one important thing which we'll be using again and again. The other one is a while loop. So we wanted to print I, where I, I initialize it to one, and then I want to go all the way to 10. Now it doesn't know how to advance the counter I. So what I do is I say, I need to advance I as I plus one. That's one way of doing it. The other way is to say I plus equal to one. Both will work. So I'll just use one of them, not both. And then control shift P. And so it ends up printing all the way from one to nine. But sometimes you might want it to break out before it prints all over to ten, nine. So there's a break command. So let's say that we want to stop printing when it reaches six. So if um, I equal to six, say break. And let me, com let me comment this out because I don't want this to print. And then come on, control shift P. 
and he say it's one through six and stop the drink while go to nine because I had a break, which basically tells it to, I'm sorry about this, I'm just getting used to those. So it basically goes up to all the way to six and then breaks. And so it doesn't really go up to 10. Okay, so that's why. And I'll show a for loop and then we should be done. Then we have function. So for x in, Range five, um, range x. So what it does is here, uh, range basically tells it to go from the default starts at zero and goes all the way to uh, to five times. So go, goes up to four. You can check it. Control Shift P. So it goes up to four. So that's five numbers, right? Zero to all the way to four, and that's what it means. You're almost there now. The other important thing I think which you'll be using quite a lot is functions. So functions are something which you can sort of write a block of chunk of code and reuse them multiple times. And that way you don't have to keep repeating things. For example, uh, think of sim simplest uh, factorial, right? You don't want to keep doing three times, two times one or five times, four times, six times two. And so you just write a function which will do that for you and you're done and you just call it with five or six and it'll just give you the product of all numbers to till, till that number. So here I'm going to introduce a function. Let's call that my function. Uh, so a function is starts with def, and then you put the function name. And then in this case, I don't want to pass any input argument. So it's there's nothing in the brackets. And then just like the if else, you put a colon. And then once you enter it again, puts a tab space. And then I'm just going to have this function print. Uh, this is my function. And then the calling the function is just saying my function. So everything works out, it should print that. Control shift P. I messed up the font. Okay, control shift B. And then this is my function. Okay, one more function and get done with uh, functions. Uh, you, I'll just show you an example of uh, passing arguments. So let's say that we want to write a function which adds two numbers and the inputs are A and B. And then you need to, uh, of course, add them and then you would return the value of the sum. So you put return A plus B. We need to stop this autocorrect. Okay, sum equals my add a mod b, sorry, I need to give values to that. So three, let's say four, and then print sum. Okay, so what it does here is uh, when I pass my add three comma four, a takes a value of three, b takes a value of four. I sum it here, three plus four is seven, and then I return it as uh, seven, and then that return value is assigned to sum, so sum equals seven. And then eventually I print sum, which will print seven. So control shift P and then it prints seven. Okay, so that is just the basics uh, of uh, using Python. Now let's 